Hello everyone and welcome to a little Planet Coaster management tutorial. Today we are going to look at something uh, that hasn't been touched so much, um, I have the feeling, and this is also why I want to do this video. So as you may know, um, from last year we have the ability to create our own scenarios. But before we can play scenarios, there has to be something else and this is management and I know that some of the people out there uh, consider the management aspect of the game as the weakest point and it's more like a sandbox game. That might be true for the most part of it but though I find um, a lot of things are not too visible in the game but they're quite good actually and we do have to talk about them. Um, I also wanted to say just before going into this and you can skip through the different uh, areas of the video real quick if you want but let me just do this slight and, and little introduction to make sure um, you understand what this video is aiming at. So I'm going to go through um, all the uh, different aspects of the management system in Planet Coaster and also managing, uh, mentioning what is going on behind the scenes so to say because there is a lot of things happening in the game that are really not obvious to the outer world and um, I think a lot of the criticism is also resulting out of misknowledge or just that people don't know that there is actually something in the game which is pretty good. Um, and now as we have the scenario editor it's really up to us the creators to create good and challenging scenarios to to make us all have the chance to play really great scenarios and to be honest there are already some great examples out there. Um, if I do uh, remember I will put down some links to some very cool scenarios down below in the description. Other than that, please let's start a discussion in the description below. What you want to see from the management uh, point of view in Plant Coaster? What do, are you missing the most? And you know, let's let's keep this a discussion about the management in general. But now, that's enough of my uh, little intro part. Now let's start actually what the management system is about. So, if we hit continue, we are actually in this scenario. This is a self-created scenario I did by myself. This is a little London Park and so on. Uh, I'm gonna explain a little bit more about this in the future. Let me just quickly pause the game, otherwise we will run into problems because it's, it's starting all a bit fast. I'm not going to play this one, by the way. I'm just going to explain something. So, starting with the top left of the screen, you have three different buttons here. We have the help button, which is also F1. We have the notifications and we have the most important one, the objectives. So this is very interesting because this is leading us through the whole scenario. Um, there's already listed down what you have to do to achieve or to fulfill the goals of each different um, yeah, level. So it's easy, medium and hard, which is basically everything uh, and every time the same in all scenarios. So we are starting with the easy one. We have to employ four janitors, we have to employ three vendors, we have to employ two and and so on. First, you can see and sometimes you have also a sub um, category which has to be fulfilled to fulfill the overall goal. So um, there is achieve a rating, uh, a park rating of 1310. Currently it's at 1068 and there is, um, you know, another important thing. You have to do this at the end or before the end of June year one and less than four months remaining is the information we got now. So you have to be really quick at making the park rating better. Um, so the next thing we have to talk about is what's going on in the management. So therefore we have the park management on the bottom left part of the screen. Before we go in, we have something else. We have the name of the park. We have your current monthly profit and obviously your money you have available at the moment. You see that we have a monthly profit of minus 596.47 uh, in-game dollars. And we have a park rating, as I said, um, of 1068. We have zero guests at the moment in the park. And this is the basic information, but if you want to have this more detailed, we click on park management and bam, there you go. This is the overall management tab and there is a whole lot of stuff going on. Starting with the overview, we have the guest summary, we have the staff summary and we have the ride summary. Then we have in the next tab, the finances, where, which is not too detailed at the moment because basically um, we just started, so this will be growing 
as long as we play and then we have more information. Next to it we have the research tab. In the research tab we can start researching different items. So if we start a research we can choose from different things we wanted to research. We can go for coasters, for rides, for shops and facilities, for scenery or for building. You can only start three different research projects at once time but you can so research is in we have marketing this is basically as always but there is a special thing about it we are going to talk about later we have the staff tab where you have everything about the, uh, the staff available in the game we have janitors we have mechanics we have security and we have vendor we're going to talk about them more in detail later and obviously we've got entertainers and some more tabs down here but we are going to go through this in detail just doing a quick overview before we go into in detail then we have a guest overview of our three different groups we have a attractions and shop overview where you can actually quick access the open and close status of it as well as the prizes and stuff like that also we have the security management and we have some special effect management going on that's basically all about the basic tabs we have going now back to overview we can see that there are also some more tabs which are going a little bit more vertically in that tab so we have in the overview basically those three different areas with the guest summary we have the staff summary and we have the ride and attractions summary but in each of those we have additional information we have the top guest thought well actually we, we don't because at the moment we have no guests so there are no thoughts but um, they will be collected in here which is important because that will give you a hint what's going on in the park what is wrong what is good and this is basically a good hint to make you um, actually understand what's going on with the park to improve it um, then we definitely have the staff summary which also helps you to keep an overview of your monthly um, management and money flows uh, or cash flows I should say and also about which are the most profitable rides and which is the most popular uh, shop and so you can also adjust the prices of those. Then we have the ma marketing overview uh, which shows you which campaign is available at the moment and which is not um, and also which are the marketing costs and how many slots are available and stuff like that. Um, going into the next one is the ticket prices. I believe this is pretty easy but there is one thing um, which is very important and this is addition which hasn't been introduced to a um, to a coaster tycoon game in that kind of sense I know it is in some different management games a, a part of it but and this is the first time mentioning it and we are going to go more deep into it while we're going back to the guest tab but you can cho choose different prizes for standard and for family at the moment you see there is a no real difference in it because I didn't choose it but obviously for a family you may want to have a price that is higher because um, as you can see the entrance price for each child in a family group and the entrance price for each group in an adult or teen group so you know basically one what you want to do is make the price of the standard ticket obviously higher than for the child but it is important to think about that a little bit more in detail if you want to make more money out of entrance ticket prizes um, you want to also spend a look on what kind of target group you have and now jumping back to our overview we see that we have three different target groups which is interesting because that's a new addition to a management game in the tycoon or uh, to a tycoon genre of coaster games I, I believe it is I'm not quite sure if roller coaster tycoon 3 had also three I believe they had two I'm not quite sure about that at the moment um, I should have looked it up but anyways uh, we have three different target groups we have the adult group teen, uh, guests we have the teen groups and we have family groups um, this is very important because that makes you also as a player um, a little bit more in in the position or it puts you more into the position that you have to deal with different groups and that makes also according to your targets or your objectives in the park you have to attract different groups now back to the prizes you can make more money out of it if you are going for example only for teen groups because then you can also have the standard price and everybody has to t um, pay the standard price if you are going for more um, uh, family coaster rides and family parkish things then you will attract more families that means you will earn less money because the amount of guests in your park is uh, the majority of it will be kids and they pay less so you will gain a lot less money from the entrance ticket prices which means that you will have to gain money elsewhere which as you have the teens you will gain more money from the entrance prices but they 
most certainly won't go too much onto the flat rides and kiddie rides. That's something you want to have to keep in mind while playing it and also while creating a scenario. Okay, onto the next, uh, next blah, blah, sorry, last tab is the park rating breakdown and I guess it's, it's we don't have to talk too much about it. You can also see what's going on, which is funny. You can see also the total park lifetime vomit. It's a very important statistic, guys. Yeah, that means you can also see how much your janitor has to work. So if she's complaining that he's working too less and you have a very high number here, potentially your janitor has to be fired because he's not doing his job correctly. Anyways, on to the next tab. In the finance overview, we have also some other tabs. We have the loan tab, which is uh, pretty much a good one because you can see that we have active loans at the moment, which are also part of the objectives because as you can see, and now I'm jumping out of it, damn it, um, you can see that we have to pay back the loans somewhere, I believe I put this in. Uh, let me get this straight. Where do we have this? Pay off all loans. There we go. Medium pay off all loans before the end of October year one. So this is very really important. You can see here we have two loans running and you can also see what's the interest on it. And you see what you have to pay in the interest. This gives you an overview of how much money you will gain once you have paid off the loan. Anyways, you can also get a new loan and if you click on it, you see the loans available, which has different uh, interest rates. And yeah, basically it's, it's something which you do know from management games, obviously, but it's in. So, next going into the known history, obviously we just started, so there is no history. Jumping on to the next one. In the research tab, we have two different ones. We talked already about this one, but there is also the research history, which isn't filled at the moment. It will be filled as soon as you go into, but if we click on research, as we have done before, you can see the different areas and so on and the force. In the marketing tab, I already showed you that you can start different marketing campaigns and we have also marketing history, which is nice to see, but at the moment, because we just started, as mentioned before, um, there is not much going on. But if we click on this, now it's getting interesting a little bit more because, you know, that's uh, something we already started to talk about at the overview, but we have different target groups, which means that our marketing campaigns are also targeting different groups. Whereas in um, older games, you also had the ability, it didn't really change much because it was just a nice feature, that little detail that you had different kind of types, but all they did is they attracted people for, you know, either a special ride or maybe just for a special area. But in general, they just attracted people, no matter if teens or adults or whatsoever. Now you do have different areas where you can put on your marketing, which is pretty nice because an online banner advert, as you can see, attracts more adults, but fewer families. And the TV commercials will attract lots of families, ideal for larger parks and high impact marketing. But as I said, you will potentially lose the teen groups, which is a little bit bad because, you know, you will also want to keep an eye on them if you need them for, uh, you know, fulfilling your objectives. But you can see you've also attracted a lot of teenager groups by making it for a comedy show. Also, we have the different print campaigns and so on. This is a very effective tool once you want to change your target group to make more money out of your rides or make more money out of your entrance price, as described earlier about the ticket pricing. So you see, we are already going into a level of detail, which is kind of nice, I believe. Anyways, on to the stuff management. We already talked about this layer, but now, as you can see on the left-hand side, there are a lot of sub-layers in this tab, but they are all there for a reason. So, um, first things first, we have the four different staff members, which is the janitor, the mechanic, the security guard, and the vendor, which is a latest addition from the last patch. Um, and also we have different kind of entertainers. Some of them are not unlocked yet, but um, yeah, basically what they do, we can talk about in each tab individually. So we have the old tab overview, which is very nice because you can see all your individual staff members and what they're doing, how they're be, um, current status is, how their current happiness level is, how their training level is, what you're gonna pay them, and if he's, um, you know, aligned to a roster or if he's just moving around. We are going to talk about rosters a little bit later. Uh, maybe, no, maybe not. We're talking about rosters right now because that's not basically um, something we, it's not too big actually. But let's talk about this for entertainers. 
So in the Entertainers tab you see basically you have the same overview as you had in the old stuff tab, but it's now focused on Entertainers, which is handy if you just want to do change something with Entertainers. So Galpy Rex is roaming in the park. His happiness level is kind of medium, it just started, so this is basically the average uh, number you're starting with, but his energy level is kind of high. Once it's going down, you will have to send him into a stuff management building, which we are going to talk about a little bit later. Um, we have 200 bucks in the mo uh, in one month to pay him. I would say he's a very poor guy because that's very that's not a good number. But anyways, um, then we have the roaming option. And if we want to have our entertainer roam around a certain area, which you all know from past games, which is very handy if you don't want to have too many, you know, of your. Uh, just half of your staff members running around one certain area and you know just don't care about the rest of the park which is very annoying because then you just keep dropping down new staff members and they don't do shit um, then it would be handy to you know assign them to different areas and how you do it is to just create a new roster as you have seen I just clicked on the plus and now you can select basically something and if we for example want him to go over here we can select this one and I can't save because we don't even have selected a shop, but I believe, yeah, now we can do it because as you can see, now we selected a shop and we could save this roster and create this one and, oh, sorry, I just forgot to name it. Anyways, um, this is the one I create. I could just rename it now and let's call it the bus area safe and now you have a roster created um, or roster I don't even know how to pronounce it correctly uh, which is called bus and now if we want to align him uh, we have to go back to entertainer we're gonna select the bus one so now bus is selected and what he's going to do now is he he's gonna move and now let me not click to, uh, close this and show it to you now Galpi is going to room around this area which is very handy if you want to make the overall flow of it a little better but we will talk about that in detail later on so the different tabs you can see we don't need to do too much because it's basically uh, always just a little overview for each individual one um, but you can see now that uh, I don't have anything else than vendors and entertainers there is no janitor uh, why there is no one in here I don't really know um, we have also no mechanic we have no security guard we have uh, wait why is this in here okay it uh, seems there is something weird going on here I believe the tabs are a little bit confused I don't know why but anyways this is the overview for rock roaster but let me just let me just close this for a second and go back in Okay, it's a little bit weird. Now it's working again. So you see that's the working roster and um, also you can see now that's all. That was that was weird. Anyways, um, you can see now the rosters are back in and we could create a new one if we want so, but at the moment we don't want to. Now this is the most interesting tab um, for what I wanted to talk about for a while now. So I began at the beginning to explain that we have different target groups and different types of guests. And I also showed you the different marketing options. Now we have the overview of our dem demographic breakdown, which is, I believe, a very nice detail of management. And only if those pre-built scenarios would challenge us a little bit more, then it would also be a standout feature. But I believe we have to do it a little bit better on our own now because there is potential in it guys and I want you I want to encourage you to to just grab it and show us what we can do with it because imagine a park which is solely as this one is solely made for families right this is just a tiny little park in the middle of nowhere which is solely made for families just only families in this park and all of a sudden a different investor uh, investor is coming around the corner and he wants to change this one to a thrill park with a lot of different thrill rides, but it's no place for families at all. You have to change your whole target group. You have to run different marketing campaigns, you have to keep an eye on different rides and stuff, and you have to keep an eye on ticket prices and so on and so forth. So we can actually challenge us by this little thing. You know, you can create a whole scenario just around changing the target groups. But you can see in this tab, this is Basically, the overview about the adult groups, the teen groups, and the family groups. They will all spend different amounts of money into different kind of things. And this gives you a really nice breakdown to understand what your park is actually... Um, you know, what kind of park you're running. Is it a more family, um, family-leaned park or is it a more adult 
a park in that kind of sense that it's more thrill rides in. You know, this is basically very interesting. And you can also see the different needs of your guests because this is also important because if you fulfill the needs, they will be more happy, they will spend more money and we are all happy. Anyways, we also have, and this I mentioned already in the beginning, the guest thought step. We don't have any guest thoughts in, so let's keep the game running now. So we have a little bit of things to talk about later on. Um, but well, bam, there we go already. So people are coming in and you see some of the first, uh, you know, things. And let's stop this here. Um, 61% are happy because they just arrived. Well, happy, yay, it doesn't give us any information. But now, see this, they just entered the park and they said, oh, I stepped in thick. This is, because this scenario is made for, um, oh, yeah, just inspired by one of the old Rollercoaster Tycoon 1 scenarios. It's completely trashed, as you can see, there's everything lying around. We don't have janitors, we don't have bins. And you have to clean this mess up and this means you can also read now not just from the objectives but also from your people's minds that there is something you have to to change right 11% um, think that priority passes are for suckers that's very interesting do I even have priority pass lanes no I don't maybe he wants to uh, say that he wants to have one anyways uh, that's basically about the guest tab and you will have um, a graph on different kind of target routes, which is really interesting later on and we're gonna look into it if uh, If we are even going to manage that by the time that this video is running because I don't know if they will be available Maybe you're gonna speed it up later on anyways, let's go to the next so attraction and star uh, shops can be done very quickly So you have the overview. This is for the attractions. You can quickly change the different uh, stages of, of if it's open test or closed you can change the prices and you can definitely check where it is located in your park if it's a bigger park this is a re really handy overview to to click kind of quickly through the park and which is also a nice detail this is not going to shut down once this window is opened so if we go to shops you can do the pretty much the same you can just you know click them and just go from one shop to the other so it's really handy same goes for facilities and bam there you go nothing more to talk about in the security management tab, which is very important later on in the scenario, which is demanding you for, yeah, I would call them challenges regarding security. But at the moment, you can see there is nothing happening in the park right now. But actually, the park just opened, so well, it's obvious that there is nothing happened yet. But in the future, there will be things happening, and this will give you an overview of what you have to keep an eye on. Also, we have the camera statistics. We have at the moment two security cameras which are in the park because I wanted to film stuff and forgot to remove them. Sorry, um, but you can see running costs at one uh, in one month are a hundred bucks, and also act of vandalism uh, is spotted here, and also theft things spotted so it's just an overview to show you if the money you're spending into security cameras is spent well because if there is like you know if this number is very high and this number is very low you should think about if you really need them right or if they're in the right position so camera statistics you can see we have um, basically what's going on in the park we have vandalized benches 21 of 21 Hmm, interesting, isn't it? Because, well, I just made them all broke down before I opened this scenario. Well, met me. Anyways, you can replace them all. If you hit this one, let's quickly do this. Bam, there you go. You see it down here. All of these benches are redone. I would have loved if they just deleted that option. I just, I, I searched like hell, but I couldn't find the option to deactivate that. I wanted you to put down mechanics to fix them, but all of a sudden I found out that there is a button to re please, uh, replace them all by just one click. Anyways, you even had to spend money, but 310 bucks for like 21 benches is not too much actually. So yeah, that's a balancing problem, but not, let's not go into this one too much. But as you can see now in this tab, you can basically repair everything if there is anything broken, which I believe is a good one. It would be nice to make this, you know, make us able to disable this because it is too easy, but for beginners, it's, it's a very good option that it is here. 
Going on now to the uh, special effects, uh, we can also go through this quite, uh, quite quickly because there's not too much to talk about right now. You can make different shows and different special effects and you have an overview which of the different things you are having running. At the moment I don't have anything in this park so we only have the different rides that obviously also could run special effects such as sound and stuff. But well, at the moment there are any, but if you place down some speakers and some billboards you can also have an overview of, of them, like you have with the shops and stuff, so it's pretty handy to have them all in one place. But this tab is not as important as the other things I mentioned, but it's nice, so yeah, happy we have them. So now, as we have discussed the basic overview of the management tab or the park management in general, now we want to make a small break here and let's pause the game. We have talked about a whole bunch of stuff now, which is very important to have a general overview of what is possible or not. But, you know, why do we want to have all these kind of options? Because if there wouldn't be any demands from our guests and if everything was, would just run fine without doing stuff, all those options are nice but kind of uh, not useful, right? So what is this all about? So what, what do we have to spend an eye on? Basically, Every individual in the park has a different idea of what he's going to do in this park. So if we click on different guests, you can see the guests have needs. And for each guest, the needs are different, which is nice because then it's a little bit more tricky to fulfill all the guests' needs. But if we click on a random people, uh, random one now, and let's take this one, you can see she is, I believe she, yeah, that's right, it's Shiri Glenn. Shiri Glenn. She's hungry, right? She's hungry. Obviously, she's a girl. Girls are always, always hungry, so that's not surprising. But she's hungry. And she's not that happy, actually. But she's got a lot of energy. She doesn't have really... She's not thirsty, right? She doesn't need to go to the toilet. And she hasn't been on the chair planes, I believe, because otherwise Nuzia would be very bad. At least for me. Anyways, um, this is very interesting because you see those needs and everything you do in the park is done to fulfill those needs. Because the higher those bars are, the more money they spend. And the more money they spend, the easier it's for you to fulfill the goals of the different things demanded in the objectives, right? So basically, that's all we want to do in a tycoon game. Make money to fulfill the goals. Don't we? Right, we want to. But also, there are some other things in the game which are a good challenge. So let's consider this guest's overview or the guest demands as one of the first challenges in Planet Coaster, which is very good. We have six different ones to fulfill. Bam, that's it. There you go, right? So this is potentially the first thing we want to consider while we are playing this game. The second one is neatly displayed for us. Now, we have a ride over here, but it's not working for a very good reason, because we have no mechanic available. That means we have to employ one and you guys know this overview now, so we can quickly go to the staff tab. Hire new stuff and we need the mechanic, right? So we plop down the mechanic over here, we unpause the game and let's now wait for the magic to be happening and the mechanic is going to start and what is he going to do? Right, he is going to fix the broken down chair or plane one. So now if we speed up the game, we can follow him as he's going into this one and he's going to fix it. So I'm also going to slow down the game again and change this to oh, just close this tab because basically that's already what I wanted to show you guys. This is basically a very, very common thing in a theme park game. There are rides that attract people. People can go on, spend money while they're going on it, but they can break down. You need a mechanic to fix them. If you have a lot of rides, you need a lot of mechanics. If we have a, you know, bad maintenance, that's bad because they will broke down more often so we need more mechanics and we have to spend more money because it costs a lot of money to run more mechanics in the park so basically I don't want to talk too much about it because that's well known um, and it would be a pity if that wouldn't be in the game but anyways it is in the game so we have full control of also obviously the, the intervals of oh wait where is it maintenance we can change the interval now it's at 30 minutes we can also put it on 10 minutes which does cost a lot of money because then we have all the ways to pay money for the refurbishment and stuff or the um, 
at the inspection, what also keeps our mechanic busy and we need more mechanics. But we can also make a refurbishment, which also helps us to keep it running for a longer time. Because as you see, the reliability at the moment is just average. So if we request the refurbishment, there we go. Now it's refurbishing, we have to wait until our mechanic is doing it. This one will go up again. So once this one is broken down and the reliability is kind of low, I would suggest that you go in and, you know, request a refurbishment directly so your mechanic doesn't have to come twice as he now has to do with my way of doing it, which was dump, because then you opened it and reopened it, people got stuck as you can see over here, and this, you know, is not really helping to, to make your guest flow good again, but anyways. This layer of management is already in the game. We have different um, attributes to write. It can be reliable or not reliable. We can make refurbishments, which has to be done by a mechanic. And we also have to spend an eye on, you know, how reliable all the rides are, because if they are all broken down all few minutes, you won't make money out of them. And your guests will be very pissed for standing in, t in a queue that is as long as this one. Also, now as we pause the game, you can see many objects are vandalized in the park, which is a thing I intentionally did, and it's broken down again. So see, we would need some more, and now the game is already taking off, but I'm going to pause the game to make it not as quick. I mean, the video is already being very quick because I don't want to make it that long. But, you know, that's the next area we have to look in. So as we had now the different guest needs and we had um, the right attributes, so to say, we go into the next area of it. So the park itself is a running system. And what makes the park interesting is the path, uh, like the, the pathing. So pathfinding is an important thing in Planet Coaster um, because people have to, you know, find their way to the, to the different rides. And as you can see, this kind of area here seems to be a bit of a problem because people got stuck here because it's way too full over here which is because we have an entrance over here we have an entrance over here and we have a shop over here which is not that handy to be honest because it keeps people busy in this area so what we would want to do is to keep an eye on how we want to lay out the path so actually we may want to have a bridge over here to kind of you know keep this a little bit away or whatsoever Anyways, what also is important, people want to sit down to restore their level of energy. But if they are all broken down all the time, they can't sit down, their energy is still low, they will get pissed off again and won't pay any money and will leave the park effectively. So you want to have some more mechanics or security guards. If you want to have mechanics, you're more of the reactive person who wants to react to all the vandalism. If you want to have more security guards, then you're more like the active man who wants to you just keep, avoid having too many vandals going on in your park. Anyways, so you see all the different and also obviously the, the kind of trash on the bottom is also very very bad because you, you have to put a lot of janitors in or just rebuild the whole thing and I don't know. It, it's kind of a lot of things to do which is very important. So you see there is already quite a lot going on before we go even into uh, the theme parkish uh, touch of it. So. Now we have the guest needs, we have the rides, and we have the overall condition of your park, like bins, benches, security, path management, uh, or guest flow, I should say. That's basically a very important layer as well. The next thing we want to go into is different shops. As you can see, we have the information over here, which is maybe a bad example, because the only thing you can buy in here are priority passes. They cost 10 bucks. Now, as we look into the park, we don't actually have any priority pass or lane. So why would people buy this, right? They won't, because it doesn't do shit. See? That's also something you have to consider. So you, you would maybe want to delete that one or at least close it to not, you know, lose any money from it. Anyways, we do also have this little shop over here. And if we click on this one, you can see we have Monsieur Fried de Five, and we have the different prizes for different products which are available in this shop. And obviously, you can change the extras. And guess what? If you put some extras on, you can raise the prize because it's more special. And this is also a nice thing because you can sync prizes and the type of stuff which is available in your park, or you can do it. Uh, you can't. Uh, you, you don't want to. You just let it be. Whatever. Uh, but this is also nice so that not every shop is the same shop in the game. Which is nice, but you do already know it from the old games as well. But, you see, don't complain of not having it. It's in. You can mix stuff and make the, the shop more attractive. By just changing ingredients and making the price higher or lower. 
um, according to what ingredients you have or not, right? Fine, you have also an overview, but I guess we don't need to talk too much about this. Now, as we talked already about the shops, which is also very imp uh, important to talk about, is the scenery, and then we go into the pass extras. And now we have picnic tables. And we can plop down one over here now, and we can plop now another one down here. I wouldn't do that if I played the scenario, to be honest, but I just want to show you something. So if I now unpause the game, hopefully it works. I'm not quite sure if so, because it's quite early on. No, it's already working. See, people are coming here, because now you have some seating possibilities, which will make the nearby shop more attractive, which is a very, 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 very decent addition to the game. So it's not only important that you have a shop in a good location between rides or something it's also important that you give people the ability to consume what they can buy here it may not be too important to make it uh, in a souvenir shop because would you sit down with a shop souvenir i guess not but if you want to have food and drinks you want to sit down and relax for a second so see this is also an, a nice touch to the management part of it i believe that a lot of the discuss or just like the the, the bad feedback about management comes also from the point that a lot of things are not too obvious to see for example like tiny touches like this I believe that not many people know about this that these benches actually affecting uh, the shop and if you ask me if you do a little scenario I would actually make you guys out there if you want to play this one I would challenge you to place shops down where people are not going to go to and then you have to change this by placing down some bins and benches and you know keep you busy doing stuff I believe that's basically the rule I will I, I want you to keep keep you busy doing it and then you can also use the different mechanics in the game because I believe in most of the scenarios you just need 20% of the given tools to fulfill the the goals of the park which maybe is also part of the problem but anyways that's not about what we we want to talk about. So after talking about the guest needs, the rights, the different um, kind of path elements and the, the, the overall status of your park and also the shops and also benches and bins and how they affect the, the area around, we also need to talk about one thing that has been added with the latest bigger update which was definitely the the, the nicest update in terms of staff uh, staff management uh, about management in general we have a new well uh, it's not new any longer it has been new once this has been released but we have a nice building which is not unlocked yet because we want to have oh it is i oh sorry i was in blueprints anyways we have a a staff room and now this thing does magic let's plop this down over here just for you know display reasons i want you to consider this one as a game changer it hasn't been a game changer that much because i believe it has been used in a different way that it was intended to be anyways the staff management building is a very important building because with the update of the expo like the the anniversary update we have had an added feature by having vendors that can room free in your park so each vendor is not bounded to a shop any longer he is roaming around completely free so you can have six shops but only four vendors for example and you can also have six shops but 16 vendors if you want so if you have a busy area and they will have to work quite a lot as they need to do over here they will get tired your vendors will get tired quite quickly and what they do then they leave the shop because they want to relax for a bit if they can't relax for a bit they will room around the park and be very very sad until they will quit the job and you have to hire a new one which is a little bit more expensive and also he isn't that trained as the old vendor was so actually what you want you want a staff management building which is over here so that the little vendor in here can leave this one go into this building relax for a bit and go back to do his job but if this one is a busy area you don't want to have a break so you want to have a second one who is well leaving the building once he's going to leave or she is going to leave this building go back in you know take over for the break of the other one and then they exchange again so this one has to be placed very strategically well because if we would now place this one yeah well you know if we just place this one way over here 
This might be nicer because people don't see it at the beginning, but that means your stuff has to go all the way around over here. And now, again, to encourage you guys out there, what if we wouldn't have the ability to relocate a management building? That will give us a lot of challenges in terms of how we lay out the park, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. So, basically, consider this also as a very, very neat management aspect. Also, the staff management building itself can be tweaked. So, at the moment, it has a capacity of three. We can enlarge this capacity by paying money and now 10 people can go in at the same time. We can also change the perk of it because we can also say, well, this is, um, for example, just for stuff entertainment. And this will mean, as you can see in this little notification, stuff will be more resilient against being underworked. So it gives them a little bit of entertainment if they are working in an area which is not that crowded. But you can also change this to stuff healthcare. Stuff will be more resilient against being overworked. Nice, because that will be a good one if it is a very busy area. You want to change this one into this one, right? But it always costs you money to change this, which is interesting. Um, because that also gives you a new area where you have to look at what you want to pay and what not. Interesting is also that, and we talked about this while we talked about the stuff overview, we have training levels. And now what's happening if we, for example, let's, let's try to find one who's working at the moment. Is she working in here? Yes, she is. Now, let's go. This is the Monique Kearney. I hope that I pronounced that correctly. And we want to train her now. Now, let's start the stuff training. And now, let's close this one, go down here. And now I'm going to unpause the game and let's make this a little bit quicker now there we go she is leaving the room because now she's going to the training i don't know if this is is this oh basically that's another one. Oh, i thought it was okay i thought it was her anyways she has to i, I think she has to still do the job anyways now <laughs> that was okay bad coincidence um anyways she's leaving the room because as you can see she's very tired and that means she's now going to go to the staff building as you can see here to relax for a bit but now we have a problem because there's nobody who can now make you money because people can't buy shit when there is no vendor so see this is also what we need to consider and also for training reasons and if I, come on, let's speed up the game a little bit. You can see that she's now leaving this one. As, as I talk, okay, now it happens as well. She left this building as well because I told her to go training and now she's, you see, she's also going to stuff building um, and the training level isn't increased yet because she's going and she's scheduled as you can see. So. You can also make this a target, right? You can make a park where the target is and, well, it wouldn't be me if I wouldn't have considered that. If we want to employ them, you can see that I also want to have at least 80% average stuff and happiness. And this means you have to send them in there. You can also make this by saying, um, well, I want to have, as you can see here, 10 trained janitors at least to skilled level which means that you have to send them into the building a few times while playing the game and i believe this is something i haven't seen in any other theme park simulation game before because that makes a huge difference to how you make the deal of shops and stuff you now have to consider that you will have to have maybe twice or even three times as many vendors as you have shops because you have to send them a whole bunch of times into the stuff management building to make them trained again, right? So I believe that's a very, 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 very nice addition to the uh, to the game in general. Ah, but anyways, damn, that's a very long video. I'm, I'm not going to excuse for that because this shows that the game has quite a depth in management. And talking also about management, we have now talked about the stuff management and so on and so forth. There is one thing more we want to talk about and this is the scenery rating of a ride. And as you can see in here, this scenery rating, the Q rating is 100%. I mean, this is one of the more easy things and also potentially one of the, well, yeah, don't underestimate that one, but also don't over, over, overplay it because it's not too important, right? If the scenery Q rating is 
lower than 100%, it won't attract as many people. That means less people go onto this ride, even though the ride statistics are good. That means also you won't get too much more money out of it, right? That's it. Basically, slap down some trees and bushes and binge and benches around that, and the rating will be fine, and people go in. But what we have to talk about is one thing which is a little bit different, and we already talked about that once we talked about this building over here which is not filled with somebody at the moment. This is the priority pass. So again, something which hasn't been introduced to any other theme park game as far as I know. Um, this is my excuse for everything. We can have priority passes and if we pause the game, right. What is a priority pass? I mean, I most of you will know priority lanes. It's a yeah, kind of development over the past century, I would say, or maybe even before, maybe the last two centuries. Normal queues have a shortcut and this shortcut is for people that want to pay more because that is the fast lane. So if you don't want to wait two hours for a ride, you can use the, pass, uh, the fast pass. And you have to buy this one in an information building or at the park entrance, in normal parks as well. Um, and then you have, for example, four fast passes and you can go four times in a ride via the shortcut. That means you don't have to wait for two hours and just maybe for th 30 minutes or something. And as you can see, we have a whole bunch of long queues in here, or as at least filled queues. What you can do now is build a priority lane in between here or maybe in between here, which is a shortcut, and sell the ha shit out of it with ticket prices, because then you earn a lot more money. This is something very interesting to consider, to be honest. So if we limit the amount of rides by creating a scenario which is really difficult by just, you know, giving you a few rides and you have to make the most of it, you can also make more out of it by just having a lot more uh, priority lanes in there. So again, a very nice introduction into a game like this. So that should be it about the overall explanation and I hope guys I haven't forgotten too much because I have the feeling I forgot a lot of things but um, I think that's just a basic overview of what the game is offering us as a management game and if you ask me this is a very 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 nice game in terms of management if the scenarios we create are a little bit more challenging. I feel that I have the same feeling as you guys that most of the scenarios are just well they're a little bit yeah, they're not always easy, but they're just a lot too straightforward, which, and I have to say, yes, um, the staff management changed quite a lot if you use it correctly, and to be fair, in most of the old scenarios of Plant Coast original scenarios, uh, staff management isn't implemented because it hasn't been implemented then, as well as the security options, so you are starting the, the, the career with basically the, the 1.0 version of the game, which hasn't had security guards and also which has like the um, staff management so obviously that takes away a lot of the depth I have talked about but I think as a summary the game offers a lot of strong parts the different genders the different kind of target groups right adults teens families you can make a great scenario out of it the different types of rides like flat rides and stuff the different management aspects like loans and and being very bad in depth and in uh, depth and, uh, and 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 uh, having to pay off a lot of loans or maybe we can also tweak the, the people's ability to spend more money or make them really nitpickers that don't give money too easy so you can also change the attributes you can make more vandals into a park you can make uh, the, the park more hard by introducing a whole bunch of pickpockets you can make it hard by limiting the amount of staff members you can employ and so on and so forth so there is a lot of things I believe the game offers enough I believe it's not a matter of what the game offers I believe it's a matter of what the kind of scenarios is we create and we definitely have to look into that a little bit more careful and create some gorgeous and great scenarios um, because I feel a lot of the nostalgia and the the, the request for uh, nice scenarios comes from the point that obviously roller coaster tycoon 1 2 and also 3 which has been made by frontier developments had because of the limitations of the old games had a very strong point in creative scenarios so there there has been you know the, the weak points in limiting 
I would say technology basis, um, or basically technology has been limiting them back then, made them go into more creative scenarios, which has been, yeah, a lot more easy to achieve because you don't have to display that in full 3D and stuff. But I believe this is, that's a very nice thing to consider. Let's make those scenarios a little bit more creative now and it will bring back the management aspect to it. One last thing we have to talk about, and this is why I paused the game again, is the blueprints overview. Because I think that's basically one weak point of the game. Um, I, I don't like to end the video with that one, so that's why we're talking about a, a little bit more positive in the end as well. But I think one thing which is very important is the drag and drop, or the, the just plop down part of the game. I mean, all the old games were basically like shop, plop it down, right, plop it down, plop it down, plop it down, bam, there you have a nice theme park. That's not as easy as it is in Planet Coaster. And this is what I meant by technology limitations. Back then, you couldn't make it look that nice because the technology wasn't there. Now it is there. So the game offers you way more ways to make it look nice and to spend an eye on whatsoever. But you can still play the game by dropping down things. At the moment, I can't do it because um, all my blueprints, to be honest, are, well, you know, they are locked because I locked the scenery, which is a little bit of a pity because that's what I think is the the actual problem of it. Because if you see, I can click through all of this and I can't use the blueprints because pieces have been used in there. So what we actually need, we need some uh, pre-done things you can use in every park. It's also a way of doing it for us, but I think that's lacking. Um, but you still can do it. You can just plop it down, right, and then make a building around this one, copy it over, or maybe use this building, for example, copy this one and use it. So there is a way of doing it. People have to adapt to it. Um, but I agree that it is not a game like an old game where you plop down a building and it in initially looks good. This time is over, but get over it because, I mean, that's the time. Um, but again, always try to look at it from two different perspectives. We can also try and, and change this by, you know, giving you all the scenery objects from the beginning, uh, which I believe takes a little bit away from it, um, from the challenge to research them. But you could do it and then just use the available blueprints in the game to plot them down. Um, but yeah, I think it would be a nice one to have some, you just a palette of, of pieces that are always available in the game and you can't lock and then also have buildings that are made out of the, those pieces so you have a, a range of pieces you can just plop down you know if you want to have a shop or a restaurant plop it down it's easy it's working that would be nice anyways to end this video i just wanted to to say and i want to encourage you guys out there that you grab the game, open the scenario editor, play around with it and create some gorgeous scenarios we can use because this game can be strong in management. I know that a lot of those things discussed out there are not entirely wrong, but I hope that this video at least showed you that there is a whole bunch of stuff going on in this game regarding management and we only have to grab all these things and and you know throw them into a mixer and make a nice smoothie out of it uh, because i believe that will also encourage more people out there to play the game more from the management part of it and the majority wants to play a management part of it so hopefully this video was helpful for you guys i hope that i was able to at least put in some timestamps down there so that you're not getting too much lost i tried to make it at least a little bit structured by just going through the whole overview and ui then showing you a little bit of the general needs and also showing you how to how you can deal with them but I don't want you to, uh, don't want to take away all the work from you. Now it's up to you that you go into the game and grab also this little park over here and play the scenario. Disclaimer: I have no idea if I am finished with that one once this video is going online, but I try to. So, guys, um, let me know in the comments below what you think, and maybe let's unpause the game to make it a little more nice looking. Oh, come on, you know what? Let's let's go into a nicer view. There we go. Disable the damn heart. There we go. Um, guys. Let me know what you think of the management aspect of Planet Coaster. Comment the shit out of it in the comments below. Tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like. We can try to reach this to, to Frontier and maybe change some of those things. But also, tell me what you thought about this video. Was it helpful for you? Could you discover things you 
you potentially didn't know. For example, like I did preparing this video, I found out that I can restore the big bins and benches by one click. God damn it. Um, and yeah, what do you in general think of Planet Coaster as a management game? So as always, thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, is it helpful or whatsoever, hit that like button. It helps me out. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and want to see more awesome, well, potentially awesome in your eyes or average or whatever, Planet Coaster creations and creative stuff and whatever, um, you should consider subscribing to this channel and I won't let you down in producing some new videos. Anyways, hopefully you liked this video and um, yeah, see you in the next one. Bye bye guys, see ya and ciao ciao.